when he lived in one of the most remarkable neighborhoods that I think has ever existed in this world, L Street and 7th Avenue, whose hub was 338 L Street, the Hardy home. Now, what was Al's contribution in that neighborhood? Crammed into this five-foot frame of a boy were tennis star Ellsworth Vines, Ike Armstrong, Vadel Peterson, and Al Fingen. You know, I thought that perhaps it's a good thing that Al was short of stature because he just couldn't contain all of the attributes and skills that Aunt Claire and Uncle John and the good Lord bequeathed on him, and he just had to keep giving them away to the rest of us. He had red hair and freckles. And for some strange reason, he just really cared about us. Take a typical Saturday, or a day in summer vacation, and just look down now at Al's doings with this cluster of kids around him. The day probably to start in the big basement recreation room, in the hearty home with that billiard table. Then the tumbling mats would be unrolled, and Al would be the lead-out man on showing us the latest tough two-man flip. Then the scene would move east to Lindsay Gardens, perhaps to the tennis court, where he'd put us through the paces of serves and backhands and forehands as we were getting started in that sport. Then if we weren't exhausted, up to the high jump pit that we had built by the swings in Lindsay Garden, and this revealed really something about him all through his life, we were really short and young, and it was pretty difficult to get enough force in our arms with the pole to get over the bar, and so Al would stand close to the bar, and he would come barreling down. Time is not, he'd grab the pole and provide the last ounce of fulcrum power to see that we got over. He was pushing people over the bar all his life. In summer again, we would find ourselves frequently in Holiday Park. And here now was a new arena for Al to show his stuff. As I look back, it seems to me that it was almost inevitable that this fellow, our coach and our inspiration, at about the age of 12, should catch the biggest fish that was ever caught out of marches in that canyon. And if no other event would do it, that one did it, propelled him into the charm circle of the three best fishermen in the family, Uncle Bert and Moburn and Al Hardy. And there he was to the ends of his day. The event from boyhood and holiday that I recall the most vividly, a little bit like that skiing trip, was my first trip to what we fondly call the Falls in Middle Fork, or Middle Falls. Daniel Boone was Al Hardy. And a group of us, I guess five or six, started off. And my, what an experience that was. The out of doors was his world. He identified the hawks. As I recall, we saw an eagle. It struck me at the time that he literally could talk to the chickadees. We got to the top of the falls, and it's a fairly long hike. I don't know how old I was. You had to jump across the piddling little stream in order then to descend down to them, and for some reason I thought it was a tributary above the Niagara Falls. And I stood there and panicked. Come on, Jade the Blade, you can make it. And over I went. On the way back, we picked wild raspberries, and he had been thoughtful enough to bring a cloth sack. And of course, one of those holiday park rainstorms came down on us, and how we laughed when we got back with raspberry jam in that cloth sack. My first trip to Fish Lake, an even tougher hike, was with older brother Ralph. And every time I go back up over that hump, I always have a feeling somehow that Ralph is with me as I look down on that spacious vista of the left fork. And you know now, as I make that journey back up Middle Fork, Al will be my constant companion there. You see, he loved life. He knew that the more he gave away of his own, the more he and everybody about him grew. He was never cross with us. We felt no competition or rivalry with our leader. Only that magnetic pull. Plate, you can make five feet. Jay Pagoda, you can get across that creek. Junior, let's see that serve once more. Unquestionably, Al shaped in a substantial way both the childhood and the subsequent lives of well more than a dozen boys. And obviously, from what has now been said, that circle has been multiplied 
in a kind of a geometric ratio of every place that he has lived. So influenced our lives and the lives of you five are witness this day that your dad lives on, both here in the way he has shaped us and you, as well as with our Father in heaven. So let us dedicate ourselves to the crowning principle that Al taught us, that the only real way that we grow is by what we add unto the stature of others. For which of you, by taking thought only for yourself, can add one cubit unto your stature?